Shout out! Bloopers. <laughs> Don't keep it. I know. You always keep it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> hey guys, we're back at our podcast with Chase Way and your girl D Smith, your bookkeeper, your tax preparer, your um, admin for Better Than Amazing Hauling. How are y'all guys doing today? You know what we forgot to do? Oh. Um, yep. <laughs> of course, always. <laughs> I forgot. When I rewatched it, I was like, how did we forget that? We went through that whole podcast without saying anything. Anything about we what we admire about each other. I didn't even, um, you know I me, mean? sometimes I don't even be looking at it because I don't like to look at myself. So, um, Want me to start off? I can start off. Start off. Uh, I admire that um, you're able to. Well, it's funny, but you are still able to catch my silliness. Hmm. I admire that uh, you were able to understand the underlying and tone of me having fun. Dope. Well, I'm your mother. So, um, I'm going to, I know that stuff because you're the same way you used, you know, you've always been. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I mean by that, um, you know how people will look at your pictures when you're young. It's like, oh, he looks the same. I can see different stages. They can't see, but they say you look the same. But I know you look the different. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as your personality, it's always been that way. Yeah, you got a combination of me and your dad, and then that silliness is all of him. The um, talking shit. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> All of that, you know, that's him. He does it to where he's not talking it to get you mad. He's talking to, the, to see how he can get you mad. And it's funny to you that you allow someone to get you that mad and you know you're playing. So, all of that stuff. You know, I already know the, the, the meaning behind what you do, in other words. So, um, when you find somebody that can understand all that, you'll be doing great. <laughs> um, I'm sure let me start off and say what I admire because it's always the same anyway um, just you keep pushing and moving forward and doing your thing and, and um, the biggest thing is you know you don't let things to get you down and that's probably a part of me and I know it may bother you mm -hmm. but you don't allow it to show and let other people see it. Mm -hmm. So I admire that about you at a young age because at 24, about to be 25, <laughs> um, in a young black man, you are, um, you can control your emotions and your feelings and things like that. And I admire that about you. Yeah. I wasn't that, I'm just now controlling my temper and uh, things that I want to say and all that stuff. Uh, it took a long time for me. So I admire that about you. Keep, yeah. keep having that. What's going on? Uh, I wanted to talk about... Uh, I guess I want to ask a couple questions about what was it like what was it like, or what type of advice could you give your 24-year-old self? Oh, that's a great question. I thought about this two days ago. And I think I was, or, yeah? No. Yes, it was two days ago. Um, driving, or three days ago. What's today? Wednesday? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sunday. It was Sunday. Actually, we were driving back from... Um, Memphis and I was telling Joe gosh I remember when I was about to turn 25 mm -hmm. and what I told myself is exactly what I done at 24 I um, knew that okay I'm about to turn 25 and my child is about to be in school and I want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So I want my son to have a backyard. So 
So I was staying in an apartment, and so I decided then <laughs> to. Um, I just thought of something so funny. He's so sick. See how he does? <laughs> I'm trying to be serious, and here he go. So, girls and ladies, don't get upset when he does that, because that's just who he is. Me, I know it. So, that's, I, the advice that I told myself is the same thing I told myself, you know. So, you're going to get a house, okay? You're right. The sacrifice that I did, uh, that's when I decided, it's like, it's time for me to stop having fun for myself and sacrifice for my child. Because I was still kicking it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were back and forth. And I was still kicking it, but even though I had my own place, it's just that I was still like a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so when um, you turned five, and I was about to turn 25, and I was like, hey, it's time for me to get my credit and stuff together and figure out what I want to do. So that's when I started, um, you know, working on me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, I was at Pulaski Tech when I was 24. And then when I turned 25, it's when I worked on my credit to buy a house before I turned 30. And I bought it at 29. Okay. So, what would you, what are you telling yourself right now? So, that, the thing that I'm telling myself right now is, um, I think it didn't got to the point where it's just, uh, Continue to be free. Continue to be free spirited. Mm -hmm. Continue to um, continue to be thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Continue to be mindful. That's good. Uh, and I think this this go a while. This this path right here is about to be a little bit personal. So a little deep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's good. It's about time because um, this is the time that you now need to figure out. Well, when I say personal, I mean um, not consider someone else's feelings. Right. I mean, that that's what it should be anyway. I'm not like that, though. I'm a, I, I like to make sure everybody else is comfortable first. That's part of me and you, and I get that. But... If you think back to, um, think back to uh, how I say I always put mama and son first. Mm -hmm. All that sacrifices, it starts there. It starts, but you got to learn how to say, hey, no, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and start doing it now than, than waiting 20 years later. Right, so that's why I just like now it's about to so, be personal. Yeah, and it's good. Yeah, so now it's just. Like, it's not about you being like. I mean, you <clears throat> you're like that because well, I was like It just that. only sucks that because. You feel I must, like I would rather prefer to be the sweet asshole than just the asshole. You got to be the asshole. I know I'm comfortable with being that. Of course, <laughs> but it's just funny that. Now it's not no sweetness behind it. So it's just hiding that. You're sweet. You just kind of, you just got to. It just. I just got to can't consider nobody feeling this. I mean, um, it depends on if you, if it bothers you like that, you got to think about the situation. Mm-hmm. So, you can choose, you know, if it's something that is not a big deal and you got the time, then you don't mind. But if it's something where you already have things in place, then you know. Now, it's a difference. And you, you, you talk about everybody, so if it includes me, let me go on and draw this line to you right now, y'all. This is how y'all, this is how y'all do with the mama stuff. Um... <laughs> But, I mean, and it's not just, I'm not going to even do it like that on mama stuff. It's just going to be what, um, like me, uh, mm -hmm. respecting what you got to do at home and, and, and maintaining what you do as well. Mm -hmm. So, 
um, say you were um, in a roommate or with somebody you didn't know mm -hmm. or things like that. If y'all had certain rules and stuff for the house mm -hmm. to respect each other, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to consider that type of stuff. But anything else, then you like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by that. So it's like you got responsibilities inside these walls. Mm -hmm. And you do what you need to do and sacrifice. I mean, do what you have to do in here and then still be able to maintain. It's kind of what I have always done. Mm -hmm. Making sure... Before we go somewhere, the house needs to be clean. You know, those mm -hmm. type of things. Which is not big. I'm just, I'm just, um, want to clarify when you say nobody's feelings. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I mean, it's funny. I, I mean, I don't, when you said that, I was thinking, what made you jump to that? Right. When you came home, I was cutting grass. Exactly. So, I was, you lost me. I was like, okay. But did that she, right did there, that not go in consideration at no, all? No, that did. And I and but what I made felt, you speak I, on that then? Because you said everybody, so I need to make sure because we are good at assuming okay. versus asking. Okay. Because I don't want to assume nothing. And then you turn around, well, I already told you, no, no, no. <laughs> Cause that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So it's just a reflection of me asking myself so just a, of what a you think. Yes. Is like, okay. I'm talking to myself. I know what you mean, mm -hmm. but I need to know you mean what you say, and if it's the way I'm thinking that what you mean what you say. So basically, it's coming out of my mouth instead of just you thinking. Right. Absolutely. That's so what we do. Cool. Yeah. Cause when I pulled up, I was like, oh yeah, is this is. But I mentioned something, and I was like, I wonder if he got what I was talking about. Yeah. So, and then, you know, and I was on the phone and all this stuff. So, I just, um, I like to be open. We both do. We like to get a clarification of what you, what the next person really means. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the communication comes in strongly. So you can, you know, get an understanding of what the, the other person thinks. Well, what I meant by everyone was uh, everyone outside of this household. <laughs> and that's all. So, okay, question number two. Uh, or let's go to what you thought about real funny. Oh, when you said backyard, no, I ain't. I ain't really like to cut grass. Right, but, that, but you like to be outside, though. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it, backyard... You I just thought of something yeah, on the on the on the <laughs> That's that's what made it funny. Yeah, because you're thinking something else. Duh. That's what made it funny. <laughs> All right, question two. Oh, I remember. And if y'all don't get this, here's the thing. Chase um, said he does. He's not gonna have any grass at when he buys his house, and I. Just literally said, I want a backyard for my child. Not knowing, and he didn't know this either at this point, that he didn't even like grass until it came to the point of him having to cut the grass. Facts. So. And now he just laughing because what I said. <laughs> but he liked it that backyard until then. Until he 100%. had responsibilities. That's all. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> See, goofball. Robert Jr. I should have named you Robert Henry Jr. Jones Jr. Lil RJ. Um, <laughs> what? What? What's that, RJ? <laughs> what up? This is Daddy. What up? What up? What? Um, what was... What was the coolest thing about being able to lock in and realize that your certain doors is going to be closed? That you know you need to close certain doors? What was the coolest thing about that? Hmm. What do you mean like closing doors? Uh, you knew that you was going to be cutting off relationships with certain individuals. You knew you was going to be cutting out certain behaviors. 
you knew you was gonna be cutting out uh, bad habits. What was the coolest thing about that? Each one of those um, things, I felt the same way that I was able to say what I was gonna do and then do it and stick with it. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest thing. It's like anything in life that I have um, went through, uh, going through it, um, being an emotional wreck. And my biggest thing is worried about what the next person thought. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to the point when I bought my house, that that biggest um, part of me was saying no to people. Mm -hmm. Um and that one really kind of gave me a uh, a wake up on thinking was this person really around me because i could always do for them because mm -hmm. i was always yes to everybody mm -hmm. and so when i started saying no phone calls and stuff you know I, all of that stuff i started noticing mm -hmm. so i'm like oh so this is what it really was mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't really about me because I knew I couldn't go to them uh, for anything. And it was only a few people I could go to. So, um, having somebody have my back was a real wake up for me that I knew uh, wasn't there. It didn't exist. I didn't have people around me and generally care about me like I did them. So, that's a thing that... Um, and I cut off relationships and stuff. I didn't care at that point because I seen them for who they were. Mm -hmm. And um, in the beginning, it hurt. And then after that, it was like, I felt so much better. I felt lighter. And I was like, dang. Now that I don't have the, got to get up and go to this house and help them do this and do that. And I could just relax, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and just focus on what I need to focus on. It, it made it better. And I think that's what, um, when I started, like, you making it things personable and going to school and stuff like that. Bought the house, and that's when I started. Uh, bought the house in 06, 07. Uh, and later on in 06, I went to school and got my associate's degree in 07. Uh, got my bachelor's degree and got my master's. So everything became about me and building me. Mm -hmm. And everything else was no. Cool. Best feeling. That's when I became and realized who I was. You know what I'm saying? Uh, using my time for me. And focusing on the plan that I need to, to mold you into who you are. So it was the um it was great. And still, you know, I still feel like and I still feel like it now that I still have so much to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cuz now I'm on another level to where I think about um I should have did this 20 years ago. But then again, not 20 years ago because this go around, I got somebody, you know, my better half with me. So, it, it's all working out the way it's supposed to work out. Do you think, um, do you think, do you think you will have much, much more fun? If if there was a way for you to able to see the future at my age mm -hmm. and build up to it, or do you think the better option is not knowing and take it day by day? I think it's better to not know. Um, just because if you change one thing that you know is going to happen, then the outcome will be different. You have to go through and learn something in order to do better. Sure. And so if you don't, if you want to um, 
try to correct something, then your outcome is going to be different. And it might be worse than what it, you know, it was. It's, or supposed to have been or will be. And so, um, I think us as human beings, it's always with the uh, unknown variable. You always try to find out what if. What if I could know what would happen in the next 10 years? What would I do? What if I knew what the lottery numbers would be? You know, because mm -hmm. you may be happy. It, it, I'm going to tell you the perfect thing that... Um, the perfect movie that will explain everything is Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Back to the Future, when he's in there and he's changing little things, he messed up. It's the first part when he saved his dad from getting hit and he got hit. Then his mama fell in love with him. So that means you're erasing your own history. So if you came back and to the future, the night that I met your dad and I was like, and you overheard me talking about him with Fanny, mm -hmm. you would be like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to... Never let him say nothing to me, and then that would erase your future because you would have never been born. Mm -hmm. That type of stuff. So, in one perspective, you looking at it like I'm saving my mama from whoever this guy is. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then not knowing that this guy's your dad. Mm -hmm. And then you look, and your your picture is fading. And you're like, what's going on, Doc? Chill, what's going on? It's like, shoot, you just messed it up. It was meant for us to meet that night. Mm -hmm. It was meant for things to happen in your past in order to dictate your future. I think that would be one of the coolest things that's I play in my mind. I would just rather watch it where you cannot interfere. Yeah. And that's it. Um, but I'd rather watch my past than my future. Yeah. Because... My past will allow me to remember why I went the path that I did. Right. The future is like, man, I don't even want to see that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because some great, what if something twisted and happened to where, boom, everything you have accomplished, and then you go to the future and you like, is this it? <laughs> so, no, nah, I don't even want to see my future. Yeah, I know my motto has always been make my future self proud. And like uh, now, as I'm about to turn 25, I'm very proud of the steps that I took just to build where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And now it's just so funny how um, now I'm able to look back to see my challenging days, my, uh, my days where I remember where I said, I don't know, but I'm willing to try it. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying that I'm very risky. I'm enjoying that I was willing to go try things to see if it was for me oh, yeah. or not. So it's just, it just, uh, it just gets funnier day by day. Well, I'm but, glad um, you could think like, you, I'm glad that I'm able to um, be a part of allowing you to be free. Yeah. Because, you know, that was the biggest thing, you know, if only if I was able to stay at home. Mm -hmm. That that part would have been like my um, foundation would have been a little stronger than me starting from ground zero. Mm -hmm. So in order for you not to, that's what makes a difference. You didn't have to start from ground zero. Yeah, because I, I think about that. I think about what if. In a world where it was just like, oh, let me move out. What would it be like? I mean, then I just go back to that conversation where it was like, my alternate choice was to either go to Georgia senior year or go to Pulaski Tech and Saturday courses do that. Right. And it's just funny. I just think about those life choices I remember making or like 8th grade, go to Colorado, 
for Uncle Sean to go to a prep school or stay here. Mm-hmm. And it's just, those are the most, the two pivotal moments where it was just like, look at, look how things turned out. It's mm-hmm. just funny. You would been more of, if you would have went either direction, as a man's perspective, for me, I'm just, and I care, I'm wrong, but you would have been more, um, one of, you wouldn't have thought about finance and stuff as much. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been something that, because, for number one, Uncle Sean is not good with finance or your <laughs> daddy. <laughs> and so you would have been like, okay, mama, hey, can you, you know what I'm saying? You would have been in that accent. No. I guess I, I would have been more codependent. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I would have been more, no, this is the road you chose. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you had that opportunity. This is what, you know what I'm saying? I would have been stealing. And you would have probably had that attitude like, dang, she always got the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, because I always had a lesson, that was my thing. I was mm-hmm. making it a, 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 a lesson every outcome or every stage or whatever you did was a learning lesson behind it but even if you knew it or not mm-hmm. if, even if you didn't understand it at that point and later on as we always talk then when you bring it up then I say what I say yeah that's the reason why I did that because there was a learning lesson on da 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 so um, I just felt and again, this reflects back to you being um, younger and growing up and being the same. I just made everything, uh, because who you were, like, everything had to be a lesson. It had to be fun, and you didn't even know you were learning. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I had to make a game out of it, but you were learning. Mm-hmm. You, you soaked things up. So all of that stuff was like a lesson. Yeah. You know, making school fun and, you know, not just, you got to go to school. You know how kids be like, oh, I just hate school. Or you make things fun. You you know, you point the games out, you know, when you're learning colors and stuff. I see something red or, oh, what do this letter say? You know, when you're learning all that stuff, you incorporate it in everyday life. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you don't want to just shelter uh go to the you know the boys and girls club because yeah you you you're around the hood kids which i already knew you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. that's the reason why i put you there you have to be in an environment where it's versatile so if you could learn to be around them which i knew from your little friend robert at Mm -hmm. in civil city court i mean him like court I knew then, yeah. You weren't caring about what type uh, of person he was. That was your friend. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And just letting you know about, you know, people and and how their personalities are. Just That's funny. I just thought of myself. I always had a dark skin homeboy. Yeah, but I mean, and you I always like dark skin and little girl. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing changed with you. So when you were so crazy, and I was like, oh yeah, he gonna like dark skin girl. Oh yeah. Then you might mix it up. I mean, you didn't mix it up all now. You like your daddy, you like all women, but you you gravitate to darker people. Your best friend, you know. <laughs> yeah. You're the same. But good that you're reflecting on the these 24 years that um, you've been in this world. Been awesome. And now you're at the milestone, you know. I know when I turned 25, I was like, dang. I'm halfway to 50. 
No, it's crazy. It's like now. I'm... And now you about to be what? I'm about to be forty five. So I got five more years and I'll be fifty. So um, at twenty five, I was like. 25 more years, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be 50. So, I was like, uh, am I, I didn't think I was going to be married for number one. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted more kids. So, um, my thing was get married and have another baby. So I wanted a little girl. That's, you know, that's my thing. But. Do you think you still want a little girl? Oh. Do you think you still want a little girl? Yeah, a grandbaby. Oh, 186,000. She could have walked, right? Yeah. She had two, two more speed. But, um. I am waiting on the grandbaby. Little girl, so whoever gives me that, then that's I take it. But no, as far as me, oh no, I'm done. <sighs> she got no more spins. She's done. <laughs> dun 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 dun. Going to the casino uh, every Wednesday. Oh no, she ain't done. Going to the casino every Wednesday has been funny. Uh, I'm three for six so far. But that's been the funny part about uh, going to the casino. And now that this is the, like the uh, month of when I really want to start saving, now it's just. Uh, Hey, well, just to keep everything in, in check. So, since I didn't come home last week and I came home this week, um, it just it's just funny just to see how, I think for the first time, I'm actually going to take savings seriously. You need to. Because <laughs> well, guess what? Reason, Mom's has another lesson at 25. Well, the, uh, the only thing that, uh, that's been funny with that is... Uh, just reading and learning about what I want to do for next year. Because I know as much as I want to move out, I just don't like, I just don't like the fact that uh, what's about to start happening with the housing market. Oh, and that? Well, everything is going to be uh, double tax. So even the, uh, the, uh, the land property tax, mm -hmm. um, just to fi just to uh, get a business loan and pay it back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of really bothering me, but I know it's 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 part of the game. But then again, it's like okay now. Within this year, it's like okay now come on. So dealing with uh, crypto, dealing with stocks. Now I'm gonna get into uh, calls and stuff like that next month. And it's just one of those things is like, I really don't want to buy from the bank. So that's why it's kind of being more so personal. So I'm going to really just, uh, I understand how to do it because I do it with binary options. So it's going to be stocks, binary options, and calls. And being able to just take that as it is, being able to uh, invest little by little each week as I continue to get back into double upload and things like that but mm -hmm. it's just one of those things just everything else I don't I can care less about so it's just like um, making sure that I reach my threshold of say if I struck out every Wednesday don't win nothing that's for $60 at the casino nothing more mm -hmm. I know I'm still spending 571 for shoes or clothes that's my cap. Every money that I do, every money, every profit or every dollar that I do get from the casino, going to cash out to be able to fund that. Now, 
two shoes that I already got so far, put that on the inventory list, bam, boom that. Now I got a couple of dollars one t shirt that might come out or accessory, then that's five seventy one or I use that to roll over to next month. But within the first week I already capped it off. Yeah. So it's just one of those things is just like um that's what I'm ticking. That's what's really going on to my mind. Because as much as I enjoy being home, I thought I wanted to come home, but I relaxed more because I, re I really didn't get comfortable with being home. And it took me quite some time to finally get comfortable. As much as I thought I was comfortable with this schedule, but I'm not. I really wasn't. It was still trying to figure out this five day, two days off. Yes, I can not do it this week, but do it next week. It'll kind of bother me. I guess since I got in the rhythm of getting everything done within those times I was off, mm -hmm. no, so that it was just still kind of, it was, it was kind of still hard to wrap around, like wrap my brain around it. But I was still pushing through, but it was just hard to get my mind to say this is what it is now so now i'm at that point where it this is what it is and instead of working five days i'm gonna start working six days just so that extra that i can start just making sure that i right, let's make sure that you coming home not driving next year at all but whatever that's gonna lead me to it's gonna lead me to so my mind just pretty much just been on that because I know I did want to move out at 25, but I really didn't get comfortable with the swing of thing of me coming home. And then, uh, that was just that. Me still sacrificing for the business, things like that. And then it was like, dang, I remember where I had this invested where it could have been if I would have just held it and just stuck with it, I would have been where I need to be for financial wise. But to go for some sneakers, make sure we did that for da da da, it was just still like so. Past two months, just re well, not two months from May 1st, well, May 3rd, from May 3rd to the until I was holding Grayson and I seen Kaiser, mm -hmm. it was just that point of relief. I was just like, all right, it's cool now. Able to just chill with them and enjoy them. All right, it's cool now. So now just like, all right, let's come over with a budget. Let's go from there. All right, let's go with this. Let's stick with this. So now I just more so just been like, okay, what are the new priorities now? All right, so got my new priorities now and just keeping up with what Biden is going to keep doing with the land is honestly it's looking like that I might I might not even buy a house right now because I got to pretty much wait until it's four terms up but the way it's coming to be like it's going to even be extended for the next 10 years so it might not be irrelevant to buy a house for the next 10 years oh. so it's just going to be one of those things is like I'm comfortable with being in an apartment because I don't really care for the maintenance of everything. Um, I don't want to trade my time for that. So it's not something that's going to bother me or but I just know I would just want it because I know I want to be able to turn a wall down at free will. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to build this at free will. So, it's just one of those things is which property that I've been looking at, what land I've been looking at, uh, do I still want to stay in the United States, do I just want to go ahead and go to Canada and experience that and give up the U.S. citizenship just like that and just roll out like that, but it's just been different maneuvers that I want to do since now I'm not really tied to anything. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to a point where it's just like, okay, now I could give up the U.S. citizenship and just go. So, it just been a lot of things like that. Hmm. Well, you have to buy me a um, Facebook portal thing. 
<laughs> you know how they had it and you be dying, but I mean, but yeah, um I yeah, hear so you. That's, yeah. that's how that's how them things that's what's really been going on through my mind. Oh. Seventy five thousand of Tesla Model X. Mm. How much is that Tesla? They always tell uh -huh. you. I think it's like fifty six or like seventy two. She'll tell you the value and it's gonna add to that. One ninety four five hundred. No, the value of that. Oh, a hundred and sixty. That was a good that was, oh, that was a great choice. Oh and god. She and she got two more spins <laughs> though. Gosh. So she gotta use those. She things. got to, yes. Cause she got a hundred thousand plus uh one more spin. So she got it. She has to do two more. Oh god. <laughs> I just <laughs> You do it fast and you get a whammy. Yeah. As soon as you start going and you try to go fast, you hitting the that's whammy. What, that's how she got back to back. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Come on, girl. Keep going. Mm -hmm. One more. <sighs> and she saw me with them like, oh, my God. <laughs> Like she winning with them. Yeah, we are watching. Uh, what is this guy? Whammy. Whammy, whammy. That's one of my shows I watch on this night. Oh, I don't know why I have cable. Oh, yes, I do. My husband. Because <laughs> I don't need cable. I watch all these shows. So anyway, uh, seven fifty eight, guys. Uh, right. we're gonna cut well, this. We're gonna short. cut it right here. Um. Great plans. Um, I told him he have some more. He's finna turn twenty five. I don't know. Uh, woo! Yeah, Four hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Look, he he ain't even worried about. <laughs> See, that's the stuff you and them. We're like, yo, we in it. We in it. We in it. I see that. You should have went me. No. It's going to be the second week of August. I'm going to Atlanta first week of August. Oh, okay. Second week of August. We will see you guys then. And um, I'm going to be in labor soon, guys. July 23rd, 1996 at 7.44. Well, I was delivered at 7.44. Yes, he was delivered at 7.44. All right. You know how much you weigh? Uh, nope. Six pounds, nine ounces. I think that's what it was. Yeah, six nine. Six nine? No. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. Peace. Hey, boy, you